And some people wonder why I use YouTube couples as examples of unhealthy relationships in my videos. <laughs> What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about mental health. And what I like to do is pull different topics from pop culture to try to teach you how to improve your mental and emotional well-being. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And for everybody who has signed up over on Patreon at the $10 tier and above, I am starting the monthly group calls the last Thursday of this month. It's gonna be the last Thursday of every month. So I just made a post over on Patreon. I also opened up the private Facebook group. So make sure that you go check that info out. And if you would like to get involved and be part of this group monthly call, make sure you head over to Patreon and check it out. It's always down in my description. I'll put it in the pinned comment as well. So yeah, a lot of you know, I've been getting some flack lately for using examples from YouTube as what an unhealthy relationship looks like. And people are coming out me sideways. But this morning, one of my most wonderful subscribers, Josephine, she actually has a YouTube channel as well. I will link it down below. But she tagged me in a post on Twitter from Millie Bobby Brown, and I was just appalled. So here's a clip right here. So I just started that new show, You. He's not creepy, he's in love with her and it's okay so i'm obsessed with it i've binge watching it absolute banger netflix Mwah. by the way i know everybody's gonna hold on i need to pause it i need to pause it okay i know everybody's gonna say oh he's a stalker why would you support that no like he's in love with her and it's just like just watch the show and don't judge me on my opinion you guys you guys this this right here is the exact reason why i talk about this stuff People, not even just young people, but people in general need better examples of healthy relationships that they're seeing on a regular basis. Like, oh my God, you guys, if my son, if my son posted this to social media and I saw it, me and him would have a long talk, a long talk, all right? Like, you guys, there's a reason why I do what I do, but part of it is because I realized this is a great way for my son to learn things. My son loves watching YouTube, he loves watching movies and stuff like that, and we sit down and we talk about it. Like, okay, do you think this is good? Do you think this is bad? Why? Explain it to me. Then I talk to him about it and say, okay, this is healthy, this is unhealthy, right? There's a reason why my son doesn't watch the Paul Brothers, and that's not even a choice of mine. He just doesn't do it, all right? So when our children are looking at unhealthy relationships, whether they're on Netflix or they're on YouTube, we need to sit down and talk to them about it. But not only that, I know like for, for the vast majority of my audience, my um, typical age range for this channel is about like 18 to 34, all right? So this is the prime time where people are looking for love, looking for the person that they're gonna marry. And we need to discuss what healthy versus unhealthy relationships look like. In my video that I just made about Bionic Pig, I talked about it. There's a right way and wrong way to do everything, right? So when we're looking at love, when we're looking at relationships, okay, there is healthy love and there is unhealthy love. There's healthy relationships and there's unhealthy relationships. For those of you who don't know about the show You over on Netflix or you haven't watched any of my other review videos, like there's gonna be some minor uh, spoilers while I discuss this. But for the most part, like you get the gist of it just from watching the trailer, all right? But here, let me summarize this show for you real quick, okay? To give you some context as to what Millie Bobby Brown think is healthy love, okay? Joe Goldberg, the main character, meets Guinevere Beck at the bookstore, bookstore that he's a manager of, all right? And he becomes obsessed with her immediately, all right? We hear his first person point of view and he becomes obsessed with her. He leaves that night and he goes and he just starts looking up all her information, looking at her over on, uh, you know, um, Instagram and Facebook and all these other things. He starts stalking her because that same night he shows up at her house after he found it, okay? Joe is not only a stalker, but the guy is a murderer, okay? Even the actor, Penn Bagley, has been posting on Twitter saying like, yo, do not be attracted to this guy, Joe. This is not good. Like, you guys, like, that is what I deal with on a daily basis. I'm like, looking at this stuff, I'm like, you think this is a role model? 
You think this type of behavior is okay? And like, trust me, I get it, I get it. My life was chaotic for the first like, pfft, 26 years of my life, hell, if I'm being honest, first 28 years of my life, like a few years after getting sober, right? Like, we need to look at these things and really understand what healthy and unhealthy is. So if you are attracted to a, a guy who is stalking and murdering, that's an issue. So one of the things is that we need to talk about when it's coming to healthy and unhealthy, like you on Netflix, I understand why people are conflicted, I understand. now. Part of it is, is that I know a lot, a lot of people think that Joe is attractive, right? Now, let me know this, down in the comments below, because I've done it too. I've done it with women in the past too. I have justified the fact that they are attractive, really attractive, or like, even in my case, I thought I was like, man, I have no idea why she's dating me. He's way out of my league. I think that about Tristan all the time. I, I fooled her somehow. But like the more, what I've noticed with humans in general, the more attractive a person is, the more BS that we'll put up with. Like, let me know down in the comments below if you've had a past relationship, whether it was just a hookup or a long-term relationship, whatever it is, let me know. Did you ever stay in a toxic relationship or even get into a toxic relationship with somebody that you weren't even like that like, mentally attracted to just because their physical attractiveness was really high. Let me know, I wanna know if I'm the only guy who does this, right? So I understand why people find him attractive, but the thing is, people think that his obsession is a good thing. Like you guys, let me tell you this, if you are like in the in the like courting phase, if you're just starting to see somebody, you know, and you're just starting to date, like I've mentioned this in other videos before, if they are obsessive, that is a red flag. That's not a good thing. So a lot of us who struggle with, you know, um, like we don't get enough attention, we feel like this need, you know, we need somebody around all the time, we hate being lonely, we're afraid to be lonely, we are more likely to find somebody that will give us an unhealthy type of love. We're more likely to find somebody who will blow up our phone all the time. But these are signs of a bad relationship, okay? Because the other person that you're seeing, they don't know how to turn that off, right? So yeah, maybe it's nice in the beginning when they're showing you all this attention, but when you need some space, they will freak out. Like I've dated uh, women like that, like where I'm at work and they will blow up my phone. Where are you? Where are you? Ha, 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 right? And I'm like, oh my God, I'm working. You know what I mean? And this is why we need to work on our own mental health and we need to work on our own fear of abandonment. Because typically when someone's blowing your phone up like that, it is because they have a fear of abandonment or they're having like irrational fears and anxieties. All right. But anyways, like when talking about Joe and Beck from you, let's move past the murder. Let's move past the stalking and talk about some other issues in their relationship. Going through each other's phones. Going through each other's phones, like you guys, that is not healthy at all. If you're in a relationship where you have to go through each other's phones, you really need to sit back and reevaluate that. I have been in relationships for years, for years, where half of the relationship was trying to figure out each other's passwords to our phone and going in there and we were constantly catching each other doing stuff, right? Talking to other people or doing whatever like that. Like that wasn't healthy. That was not healthy. So like Tristan and I, we've been together for over two years now, never gone through each other's phones, not with that intent. But like, it's also nice because I'm not a scumbag guy anymore so I can hand her my phone at any time and I'm not afraid of what she might find. So like when we're driving and I'm like, here, look up directions or find, you know, the place uh, that we're going to go eat or whatever, I can hand her my phone. I'm not worried about who's gonna be texting me. But both Joe and Beth were snooping on each other, you guys. That is a red flag for an unhealthy relationship, all right? The other thing that we need to talk about is the baggage from previous relationships. So one of, um, even though Joe kind of hit it a little bit better, like one of Joe's biggest issues was his previous relationships, right? Um, Candace cheated on him. So it made him extra paranoid about Beck. And that's one of the reasons why he went through her stuff all the time. Now, in Beck's case, a lot of her baggage came from her alcoholic father, fear of abandonment, and all sorts of things like that, right? And that kind of paranoia. Okay, now, we all have baggage. Don't get me wrong, we all have baggage. But if you see my other videos where I'm talking about relationships and couples and things like that, like you need to work on that stuff. It is not fair to bring that and put that on somebody else. And if you are, because you're still working through the process, apologize for it. Say, hey, I'm sorry, I'm dealing with some own stuff. Like, 
you need to realize that a lot of things are you issues and not them issues, all right? If you're paranoid because your ex cheated on you, do not put that on your new partner. And if you do because you're still having problems um, managing your emotions, like you need to apologize to that person and say, hey, this isn't about you. I did some videos with my mom about relationships and we talked about how 90% of arguments are based on things that didn't even happen in that moment, right? So like a lot of things are bringing up old fights, but a lot of it is bringing in baggage from the past. Now, let me tell you this. The only good thing that Beck and Joe did that entire series for their relationship was go to therapy. And even that was terrible. You know why? Because Beck was getting freaky with the therapist and Joe only started seeing the therapist to snoop on Beck some more, all right? So that wasn't even that great, okay? So when I see somebody like Millie Bobby Brown saying, oh, oh, this isn't a bad relationship, he just loves her. Like, no, baby girl, that ain't good. That ain't love. And the last thing I'll talk about is, have any of you seen the show Love on Netflix? They just had the final season last year. It's three seasons. If you haven't checked it out, I absolutely love that show because it is a perfect example of a terrible relationship, right? So for example, um, one of the characters is like um, uh, struggling with addiction and they get sober, but then uh, the person that she's seeing, Gus, uh, he's codependent. So it is a perfect example of a few things codependency and why you don't date your first year sober, all right? But anyways, I did some reviews on the show Love a long time ago and like I talked about how this show is a perfect example of an unhealthy relationship and going through my comments and seeing how many people think that that is healthy, just it hurts my soul, okay? So again, like, I'm gonna keep making videos. I'm gonna keep making videos. I'm gonna keep using YouTubers as an example. And if any YouTubers out there are watching this, start showing a better example of what healthy relationships look like or what taking care of your mental health looks like, all right? Because you have kids like Millie Bobby Brown as well as a bunch of other people watching YouTube and thinking that unhealthy things are healthy things, all right? So thanks again, uh, Josephine, for showing me this Millie Bobby Brown uh, video because I heard about it and I hadn't seen it. I'm like, oh, I need to make a video about this. So thanks again, Josephine. But again, let me know down in the comments below, like have you ever dated somebody because you were extremely physically attracted to them, but it made you lower the bar in other aspects of a relationship, all right? Or let me know some of the other questions I asked you in this video, all right? Anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make a ton of videos. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing. And don't forget, we are doing the monthly group call the last Thursday of every single month. And make sure you go join the private Facebook group, all right? Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.